to Welcome back, Top Motor family. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And yes, I know I've mixed up that order, but anyway, look at so yesterday didn't exactly go according to plan, did it? I mean, like, there's so much we can say about this, but what I want to say first of all is that I'm launching a new series with this video. You, you know me, like, when I say I'm launching a new series, I mean, I promise to make all these vids and I make up ending like maybe two or three, so we'll see how it goes. So this is the not so instant match reaction for this first episode. I ha I just had to bring him on. Like I bought on the legendary Brian Dagan, who apparently went absolutely nuts on We Are Tottenham TV yesterday. And you know what? Do I blame him? No. So Brian, welcome. Uh, thank you, Adam. It's always a pleasure uh, to be be able to spend some time with you. And good luck with the new series that you're going to deliver to uh, all our subscribers. We've got a lot of new content coming our way. And, and yes, I I, I did go. Uh, Nuclear ballistic or ballistically nuclear, whichever way you want to look at it, on We Are Tottenham oh, TV. Good. I then followed that up by going on Bob Spur TV and I said, Woohoo, everyone, it's party time. Let's be happy with all these new stadiums and training grounds. And to celebrate, and I put on a Christmas party hat, a paper hat from a cracker, and said, Let's all live in Loopy Land and great times are coming. So, uh, so yeah, I was at my. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I was on that. my. Ah, oh, mate, when I came on, I, it, on Bob Spur TV, but yesterday I did go nuclear, ballistically, mm. on We Are Tottenham TV, and correctly so. Okay, so we're just going to talk about the game in for like 15 or 20 minutes and just see, just like basically talk about it. And also talk about a few home truths, like, because it's about time we address uh, some of the things again that's, uh, no, that's that have just been rearing its ugly head again in this team. I mean, where do we start, Brian? Consistency, mentality. Even like playing and bloody just like injuries, uh, it's the same thing over and over again with us. I mean, I've noticed now this season, it starts, stops for a while, starts again, stops, starts for a while, and then stops again. And it, it, it's never ending. It's been never ending all season. I definitely was one of the people who thought that, right, when we won, what was it, four or five games in a row before the Brighton game, right, that's it. We sorted out our consistency issue. Conte has got them rolling four games in a row, thanks. Conte has got them rolling, and we're going to see a change. We're going to get that top form. Yep. Uh, that's gone slightly out the window, I think it's fair to say, with the last two games. And now, our scum are how many points? Two points ahead of us now? Two. Three? Two? two? Two, yeah. Brilliant. That means the North London derby is going to be the biggest derby you can possibly imagine between these two clubs. I, was, I mean, I was saying it weeks ago, and I'm unfortunately being proved right. So, with so much pressure on us, and we've seen how well we've handled pressure in the last two games, that North London derby, woohoo, loads of pressure. And not only loads of pressure, if this goes wrong, we have a very distinct possibility of the filth claiming fourth spot and claiming St. Tottenham's Day at Tottenham's new stadium. But hey, let's be positive because we're going in the right direction. But hey, at least it's a nice stadium. Oh, it's lovely in that training ground as well, sparkling, gleaming. It, it, but but yeah, let, 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 let's let's get back to the game. The game was horrific. The game was boring. The game was predictable. And as you remember, I've said for weeks and weeks, this is going to be a draw. I said it. I called it. I did, yeah. Jeez, you were but, right as well. But 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 here we are. Um, the lack of creativity. Listen, Conte comes in for a bit of criticism here from me and, and other Spurs fans. And we've got to remember, and I always say, if people are man enough or, or you can give the credit or you can give people criticism, you've got to be man enough to say, yeah, do you know what? This player played well. I, he doesn't normally. And it's the, the other way around with Conte. Listen, on Conte's defence, he's having to play a right back who is woeful as a player at right wing back. And he has no option because of Dohoti. He has no option yeah. because of Tanganga. So he has to That's play like there. It. He has to he has to play there. Obviously, you can try Bergwijn, Kulisevsky, or or whatever, but then you put more at risk because if that player doesn't play well and you bring Emerson on to correct it, Jesus Christ, the thought of that. Um, Sessignon was poor yesterday. I'm a big fan of Sessignon, but it's not just him um, playing two defensive midfielders when we need to attack and score goals to make sure we stay above Arsenal. Both of them were obsolete yesterday. We can't get the ball to the front three. Two games in a row, no shots on target again. Um, the only people that can actually take any credit from me in the game was uh, Ben Davis and uh, Romero. That's it. They kept us a clean sheet, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. I noticed that in the first half, Brentford 
alone, Brentford had more shots on target than we had in the entire game. How is that possible? Well, we no had disrespect to Brentford, though. I mean, like, but at the end of the day, they're a mid-table side. We're a side that are apparently going for top four. This may be a bit of a no-brainer, but you can't exactly fight for top four if you don't even have a shot on target. Never mind score a bloody goal. Well, well Adam, I'll flip that on the other side. Brentford had more attempts in the first half than we've had in the last two games. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Now we're speaking of attempts. That's, there we go. We've, had, we've, had, no, we've had no attempt on goal or on target, sorry, in the last two games. No one. Okay. Let's be honest. That's bad. But you know what? I'm going to just come in out of nowhere with just a slight hint of possibility. I, th- I still think we are in this top four race. I don't think it's over yet. Now, if we, like you said earlier, Brian, if we lose a North London derby, then that'll be an entirely different conversation. But at the minute, we're only two points behind in fourth place, which is unfortunately Arsenal, because apparently, of course, like they always do, they've just turned it on out of nowhere. But we are still in this top four race, and it could have been a lot worse yesterday. We could have lost again, but it could have been so, so much better. And we all know these players can play better because we've actually seen it. We've seen it with our own two eyes. These players, this group of players, gelling well. Gelling well? Is that even a phrase? But anyway, I'll go with it. Gelling well together and playing as a team and creating chances. But you know what, Brian? What you mentioned there with the midfield, I think, is a brilliant point. I know it's worked for us a lot, but two defensive midfielders is not going to work all the time. We need an attacking midfielder there. And unfortunately, for obvious reasons, we don't have that at the minute. No, we don't. And is it the only uh, you can you can go for Bergwijn or more or even try Harvey White. But Harvey White, he comes on if he doesn't have a good day, game or the team doesn't play well. That puts a lot more pressure on him. We haven't got cover because Skip's injured, but we don't need to buy cover. That's 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 all well and good. We 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 have a huge strength in depth problem, which I've said time and time again. But no, don't worry. We got rid of four, and they're bad eggs, and we brought in two, so we're much stronger. We got rid of twelve or seventeen players in the twelve in the summer. Brought in five. Only one of them were good. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter because this one is brilliant, and one minus twelve makes us much stronger. Woohoo! We are. Not in a good place. We are, we really are. And every single game that this happens, we are putting even more pressure on us. Leicester coming up is not easy. It's not easy. They're, they're going to be uh, wanting to try and get their places for a Europe for the Euro uh, Conference League semi final. Or they may mm-hmm. rest players for the semi final, but Leicester have got wonderful players to come in. Players that know the job. Um, but getting back to Brentford, listen, this has just got beyond a joke and I, I i i don't know what's going to happen now i don't know what's going to happen now sure. conte uh maybe i was saying you know on we are talking tv this morning maybe he needs to we know he's not going to do it but maybe he needs to say do you know what i'm going for a flat back four and put emerson mm. and regulon in their des- desired positions see if that gets a tune out of them then get some extra bodies in midfield and, sh- and change it around because it's three four three the last two games has not worked. Not to say it hasn't worked, we know it has. Kulisevsky yesterday, non existent. Yeah, do you know what? Actually, speaking of that 3 4 3 information, you took the words right out of my mouth. What I was about to say was that I think teams have finally copped on to this formation and this way of playing that Conte has been getting us to do for like weeks, maybe months on end. And I think it's time for a change. Maybe revert back to the formation that he played against Liverpool because we saw how well it worked then and we were arguably in a weaker place than we were now. Certainly in the table, we were. So. Oh, yeah, I think it's time for change, like, you know, as the all saying goes. What changes, Brian, do you think we could make to the formation? Because, once again, it's just falling apart for us. Well, you, you look at it, when we go back to a black, back four, if we were to, which I doubt we will, in fact, I know we won't, you put Romero as one of them, for sure. Definitely. But then the problem is when you have Dyer or a Sanchez or a Davies or a Rodon, that's when we make mistakes. That's when these players, like a Dyer, has made mistakes. And when you play the back three, you've got that added bit of security. With the back four, you haven't. Mm. You make a mistake, someone's in. So, listen, Conte's not going to change. He may go 3-5-2, but we don't have an honest skip to put in there. It's really, really up in the air. Listen, this is why he gets paid the big bucks. I still have full faith in uh, in Conte. Always will do. Yeah. We just have to see what he can do until the end of the season and just hope and pray that it's enough to get top four. Hope and pray. You know, at this stage, hoping and praying is probably all we have. One thing I just want to want to address here now, and it's something I've called old Conte out before. Even when he first came in, I called him out for it. His substitutions are not great. They're not great at all. Why would you bring on a player that could possibly change the game for us and has done in the past in, a, in such a big way 
i.e. three two. Why would you yep. bring him on in the last ten minutes of the game and not only do it once but do it constantly? See, this, I mean, this is the thing. This isn't just a Conte thing. This has been a Tottenham thing for years. We are always reactive rather than proactive. Um, yeah. People were questioning no. the Davinson Sanchez substitution, as was I. But when I was watching the watch along on We Are Tottenham TV with our very own D -D 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 Danny Kiriakou and Sean Butler, there was a person in the comments, I can't remember who it was, and if you watch this back and you 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 were that person, please comment. They said, Do you know what? It was because of the height, for the height for Brentford set pieces. That's why Sanchez came on, and that made total sense to me. Total sense that if they got set pieces, we needed power, we needed height. They're a huge team, Brentford. So I kind of got that one. And when he came on, we actually had more of the ball. So that substitution, as bizarre as it may have been, I can see why Conte did it. But your, your question is about Bergwijn, and I, I, I just don't understand it. I said this on our on our podcast this week with Will. I said, if you're, if you're saying to behind the scenes and in press conferences that you have faith in him, you, you think he's playing well and... He's been brilliant for internationals and he's got a future and I see him as this uh, attacker. Why then only bring him on for five minutes? Yeah, Actions speak louder than words, so they say. And yeah. with this one, it's kind of there for all to see. And I, 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 I don't understand it. I don't know if Bergwijn has done something. We don't know behind closed doors what's going on. Yeah, we, we, we're just going to have to wait and see. But I don't get why Bergwijn isn't getting the minutes. People, Some people say he's not good enough and they're completely within their rights, their opinions. I'm a fan of his and think there's something there, but but we'll have to wait and see. But it, it is bizarre why he's not getting being like the first sub on. Yeah, and we've been getting so many messages from fans also. Shout out to those fans as well. The interactivity has been up a huge amount in the past week or so, so big up to all of you. But, but from those fans, the one thing that has been prominent is that every single fan, and or at least the majority of us, have been saying the same thing. Bergwijn has to start. Why isn't Bergwijn starting? And it's Bergwijn, yep. Bergwijn, Bergwijn. And the fans are beginning to notice this. Like, I mean, despite being labelled as this great attacking player and showing that and showing great determination whenever he has come on, has not been getting enough minutes. Yes, and he hasn't even been starting. I was like, maybe he to give Son a rest, to even give Decky a rest. It's just yep. someone in that top three or even play right wing back, like, as we've been suggesting so many times on this channel in, in place of Royale. So even be bought on for the second half, just something like one thing we can all agree on is that what what he's been getting at the moment has not been enough. So we're going to have to see next season if he's even still here at the club, which I I presume he will be if he can work his way into Conte's system, or if really Conte will will decide to work him into the system during preseason. Well, you, well, you got to look at it the other way, mate. Um, Bergwijn, it's the World Cup year, and Holland are there. He's going to want exactly. minutes. He's going to mm -hmm. demand minutes. Listen. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where we go. We don't know, or we do know that he won't be backed. I can assure you that. What can we do? There's just, you got to remember, Conte hasn't been backed. And people go, yes, he has. He's got Kulisevsky and Benson Core. He needed more. He needed more. Absolutely. We all know that his creativity, and he demands a lot from his wingbacks. Well, look at our wingbacks. Or look at our fullbacks that are playing as wingbacks. This would have been what needed to be a ju uh, just one of them. Just one. A decent left wing back, or most definitely a right wing back, could have made all the difference. But no, 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 let's, let's, not, let's not do this. Um, the, the bench is limited, the, 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 the squad is weak, and we all know this. We all know this. And we have to just ride this out till the end of the season, see where we end up, go from there, and protest from there. Mm -hmm, exactly, and we'll and I'll ask you about the protests in a minute. But one thing I just want to say is that you know before this game, I would have argued that our right wing backs were doing a solid job. After this game and after the Brighton game combined, I'm now like, yeah, of these right wing backs. While they have shown themselves to be good in the past, especially on that incredible run of four games where we just battered teams left, right, and centre, they're not good enough. Of you know, in the long run, you know, their longevity if that makes any sense, isn't good yep. enough in that position. And like you said, they're full-backs playing in a wing-back position. And if we do manage to scrape into the Champions League, one thing is for definite, we cannot play there in the squad because we're going to finish last in the group, group stages or second last. Either way, we're not going to get very far. So this team needs to be upgraded. Players need to be upgraded. We all know the drill at this point. But whether, the, whether that will happen is an entirely different story. And that brings me on to the protests. Now, I just want to ask you this. If we don't yep. get Champions League, but if we do manage to get like Europa League or something, but 
But forget everything else. If we just don't get Champions League, will you protest regardless? If we get Champions League, I'll be protesting when I'm back. If we don't get Champions League, I'll be protesting when we get back. There, listen, I, I, say, I say every <laughs> single day is leave me out day. And I stand by that. I am not alone. It doesn't matter where we finish. It doesn't matter because we're not going to get backed. And as I said on We Are Tottenham TV yesterday, do I think we get top four? I don't know. I don't fucking care. And the reason I don't care is because do I want to hear Tottenham get battered everywhere we go in German, French, Spanish, Italian, Dutch? No, I don't. Because we won't be backed. We'll get walloped. No. Listen, protests will happen until he goes. It doesn't matter if next season we finish second. There are things that have gone on way too long and been allowed to happen for far too long that it doesn't matter what happens. Once Daniel Levy leaves this fucking club, I will wish him nothing but the best for his future. Him and his mm -hmm. family, go live in a life of luxury. Go buy as many fucking properties away from N17 as you want. Build as many hotels. Do whatever you want. But until you leave the club, you are public enemy numero uno with me. He knows it. The whole Tottenham community know it. And I'm not alone. And we no, ain't going not. down. No, we, are, we are not. We, we ain't going anywhere. We ain't going anywhere until he goes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, okay, that's fair when you really think about it. Because if we get top four and if we're not backed, backed and we start protesting, then it's too late. So there's no point in waiting th this out. Like And like you said, 20 years of this, or 21 years of this nonsense. I've been a Spurs fan since 2008. I've grown up with this. I'm basically used to it, but that doesn't mean I have to be happy about it. So, or believe me, if I was there with you, I'd be protesting with you as much as I possibly could. Do you know what? We've discussed a lot about, about the game and about, unfortunately, Levy, but, you know, we hate to do this all the time, but it has to be said. That's going to be enough to end off the first episode of this brand new series. Well, I say series, it'll probably end up being two or three short fits, and that'll be it. But look, at, we'll see how it goes. And of course, as usual, I just want to remind all of you to like and subscribe, share this video with anyone who you think would be interested. Or as Brian is warming up his cannon fingers, as I like to call them, I'll them to be shot at Danny Levy. Just want to leave e Eve Brian with his famous words to set to end the video. And as always, Levy out. <laughs>